watching Tag TV. Good evening and welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 10th of September. First Bimstead Joint Military Exercise kicks off in Western India. Pakistan doesn't want peace to prevail in Afghanistan, says Afghan activist. And General Purna Chandra Thaba takes charge as Nepal's army chief. And now for all the details. The first joint military exercise between the BIMSTEC member nations kicked off in India's western Pune city on Monday. The week-long exercise will focus on improving compatibility and interoperability in counter-terror operations. The first military exercise of the members of Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economical Cooperation or BIMSTEC kicked off in India's western Pune city on Monday. The week-long joint exercise, named Milex 18, aims to focus on improving compatibility and inoperability in counter-terror operations. The exercise is being administered by a joint directing panel with senior officials of national contingents. It will mainly focus on handling and neutralization of improvised explosive devices and training in search and cordon operations. The aim of this joint training exercise is to acquaint all the armies of the BIMSTEC nations with each other operational procedures, thus ensuring better compatibility and interoperability in counter-terrorist operations. The joint exercise is scheduled from September 10th to 16th at Pune's armed military station. Established in 1997, the BIMSTEC grouping accounts for 22% of the global population and has a combined gross domestic product of 2.5 trillion US dollars. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan government has cancelled the diplomatic passport of former Finance Minister Ishaq Dar, who has been declared an absconder in a craft case. The Supreme Court at last week initiated proceedings for extradition of 68-year-old Dar, who left the country soon after a court began hearings against him in a craft case filed in line with the Apex Court's July 2017 Panama Papers verdict. Local media reports said the Foreign Office has cancelled the diplomatic passports of Dar and his wife, who are staying in the UK since last year. Under the law, Dar was bound to surrender his wife's diplomatic passports within 30 days of seizing office as the Federal Finance Minister. After the cancellation of passports, his movement will be halted and he would not be able to travel from England to another country. And moving on, deforestation in Gilgit, Baltistan has been causing environmental changes that are threatening the lives and property of people in the illegally occupied territory. Locals blame Pakistan, the major beneficiary of natural resources abounded in Gilgit, Baltistan, has shown no interest in curbing the rampant activities of timber mafias in the region. Gilgit Baldistan, home to world's largest glaciers, has been facing substantial climatic changes for the last one decade. The impacts of climate change in the region can be evaluated through the recent meltdown of Barswad Glacier in Imit River, which caused flash floods in the illegally occupied region. बताए जा रहे हैं कि गिलगित बल्लिस्तान के जो बड़े ग्लेशियर हैं यहाँ से पानी जाता है पाकिस्तान सेरा होता है वो ग्लेशियर 50 से 60 परसेंट कम हो गए और वो चरागा था गिलगित बल्लिस्तान का तो बता रहे हैं कि वो चरागा बिल्कुल खत्म हो गया है Pakistan, the major beneficiary from natural resources abounded in Gilgit, Baldistan, has shown no interest in curbing the rampant activities of timber mafias in the region. Millions of cubic feet of wood is reportedly cut illegally in the region annually. Locals blame the continuous interventions of Pakistan in the illegally occupied territory of Gilgit, Baldistan, 
has gravely impacted the ecology and economy of the region. An Afghan social activist has called Pakistan a growing cancer which should be removed with an alliance of international forces. The activist blamed Pakistan as been sheltering, trading and infiltrating terrorists across the border to Afghanistan to carry out the attacks. Matiullah Mehti, an Afghan social activist who seeks a safe and secure life for all Afghans, has called Pakistan a growing cancer which should be removed with an alliance of international forces. Afghanistan's security situation has become increasingly volatile, with terrorist organizations operating with a common aim of overthrowing the Kabul establishment, regularly unleashing mayhem in parts of the country. Leaders, activists and common people of Afghanistan whose life is in constant peril have repeatedly accused Pakistan of accommodating, training and sending terrorists from across the border to carry out attacks. Pakistan is the cancer of our world. If the world not help Afghanistan and not remove Pakistan map, this fire will be arrived to China, this fire will be arrived to, to America, this fire will be, be arrived to each country of the world. Is Pakistan sent money terrorism to, to America like 9-11? This attack was also from Pakistan. So I don't know why the world is still silenced to Pakistan and not attacking on her. Pakistan has virtually been isolated off the global community, especially after the Financial Action Task Force greylisted it, owing to its failure to stop terror funding. Although the current dispensations have vowed to completely eradicate the terrorism from its soil, However, with the deep state of army providing an untiring support to the slaughterers of humanity, it is highly unlikely that the status quo is shifting even a bit in the country. A suicide bomber detonated explosives in Afghan capital Kabul on Sunday when the whole country had come together to commemorate the 17th assassination anniversary of national hero Ahmad Shah Massoud. The blast, which occurred close to a procession marking Massoud Day, wounded at least two people. A bike-borne suicide bomber detonated his explosives close to a procession commemorating the 17th assassination anniversary of Afghanistan's national hero, Ahmad Shah Massoud, in capital city of Kabul on Sunday. The blast which wounded at least two people came hours after another suspected suicide bomber was shot by the police in Kabul before he could detonate his device. Earlier, gunfire could be heard across the city as demonstrators fired automatic weapons in aggressive display of support for Masood, an ethnic Tajik leader who was killed by suicide bombers in 2001. The blast came four days after more than 20 people were killed by a suicide bomber at a wrestling club in Kabul, as well as a secondary blast apparently aimed at first responders and journalists. No militant group then and now claim responsibility for the attacks. Moving on to news from Nepal, General Poodna Chandra Thapa has taken full charge as the acting Nepal's chief of army staff. Thapa took the oath as the new army chief on Sunday at the presidential palace in Kathmandu in the presence of top-ranking officials. General Purna Chandra Thapa has taken the full charge as the Chief of Army Staff of Nepal Army. The oath taking ceremony of Thapa was administered by President Bidya Devi Bhandari on Sunday at a function organized at the President's residence in capital Kathmandu. Top delegation, including Vice President Nanda Bahadur Poon and Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli, among others, were present on the occasion. A special ceremony was also held earlier at the Nepal Army headquarters, during which the previous Chief of Army Staff Rajendra Chetri handed over the responsibility to his successor Thapa. Thapa will remain at the top post for three years. After his anointment, he will now be visiting India to take oath from the Chief of Indian Army Staff, a tradition followed for long between the two nations. In a show of communal harmony, both Hindus and Muslims came together for a procession on Sunday to mark the beginning of Ganesh Chaturthi, the birthday of Hindu elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha. The tender-long festival is celebrated mainly in western and southern parts of India.
A group of people belonging to Hindu and Muslim communities took an initiative to give out a message of communal amity by welcoming Hindu elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha in India's western Mumbai city on Sunday. They came together to mark the beginning of Ganesh Chaturthi, a 10-day long festival to celebrate Lord Ganesha's birthday. During the festival, people welcomed Lord Ganesha by whom carrying the deity's idol on a palkin and taking to the streets dancing to the beats of the drum. Ganesh Chaturthi is celebrated in honor of Lord Ganesha, who is believed to be the deity of prosperity and goodwill by Hindus. The celebrations continue for 10 days, mainly in western and southern parts of India. Over 950 runners participated in a marathon run held in India's northeastern Manipur province on Sunday in memory of the martyrs of the Second World War. Manipur was one of the most affected provinces in India during the Second World War as it became a frontline province between the British and Japanese forces in 1942. A World War II memorial run was organized in India's northeastern Manipur province on Sunday in which more than 950 runners hailing from different sections of the society participated. The nearly 16 miles run was organized to commemorate the sacrifices of valiant soldiers during the Second World War in and around Kakching district of the province. The participants also included runners from other parts of India and outside the country during the run which was nearly 7 miles in the hills and 9 miles in the valley. We are covering this 25 km out of it, 11 km is in the hill and 14 km is in the valley. So by observing both covering hill and the valley, at least there will be love and affection between the hill people. And another point is, once this was a very important world for Second World War, and many martyrs also died here. So we want to honor those warriors who stayed in Manipur, and we want to honor even their grandchildren. The event also saw performances of traditional martial arts and display of arms and ammunition to create awareness among the people about the weapon system during the World War. Manipur was one of the most effective provinces in the country during the Second World War as it became a frontline province between the British and Japanese forces in 1942. Scores of devotees on Monday thronged the Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city to mark the 414th anniversary of installation of Holy Book Guru Granth Sahib in the holiest Sikh shrine. Every year the occasion is celebrated with great fanfare and fervour. Hundreds of devotees thronged the Golden Temple in India's northern Amritsar city on Monday to mark the 414th anniversary of installation of Holy Book Guru Granth Sahib in the holiest Sikh shrine. On the occasion of the Holy Book installation ceremony called Prakash Parv, Sikh devotees carried the book in a palanquin during a religious procession inside the premises of the Golden Temple. The massive project to compile Guru Granth Sahib, which has hymns from some of the 10th Sikh spiritual leaders or gurus, was undertaken by the 5th Guru of the Sikhs, Guru Arjun Dev. Today, पंचम गुरुदेव गुरु अर्जुन देव जी महाराज ने पावन स्वरूप रामसर साहिब दी इस धरती तो श्री अकाल तख्त साहिब ते सचखंड श्री हरिमंदर साहिब जाके प्रकाश कीता सी ओसे परंपरा नु कायम रखदे हां आज ओसे ही नजारे दे नाल ओसे सरदार भावना दे नाल नगर कीर्तन दी रमता कीते ओ बड़ा उत्साह है सारी संगत विच परमात्मा सानू इसे तरह उत्तम बख्शदा रहे ते असि ये जेड़ा गुरपुर मनोंदे रहे the Guru Granth Sahib is a voluminous text of 1,430 parts. The text is regarded by the Sikhs as living embodiment of the ten leaders and the text is pivotal in worship in Sikhism. Every year, the Sikhs celebrate the anniversary with great fanfare and fervour with the best part of being the fireworks in the evening. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sagianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sagianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.